Okay, I'm trying this live. I've never done this before, so bear with me as I take you through the the emotional scale of healing your body. Yeah, it's something really cool. I'm just going to wait a few more seconds, so I just work out how to try and share this. Um, thanks for checking out the Roger show. Oh, here we go. Here it is live. Okay, so let me see if I can share this. All right, so just take take a few moments to to familiarize yourself with what I'm doing here. Okay. It's got different aspects of your life in here, your body, mind, emotions, work, business, health, self-image, relationships, and spiritual. Now, this is something, obviously, I read a lot, study a lot, and this is something which I've just, you know, you, you read stuff, and you study stuff, and you think, hmm, I could try something with that, and I developed a really cool tool from this. I'm sharing with this with you that you can use at home to self-diagnose and actually work and heal yourself. Cool. So, what we've got up here is the really cool emotions, peace, love, and joy. These are really, really high emotions. Really, really awesome emotions. And down here we have the emotions which are really going to mess with your life. Shame, blame, hatred, grief, desire, anxiety, anger, and pride. Now these emotions, um, they're, you know, if you would look at something like, everything vibrates at a certain frequency of vibration or energy. And these are the heavy emotions. You've ever, you know, even when you've had a really bad emotional day, you've ever felt emotional, um, you, you feel really heavy, don't you? Like shame is a heavy, heavy emotion. It can be emotion which um, which covers cultures. You know, whole cultures, whole tribes, races of people can experience shame for what happened centuries ago. Maybe they lost a battle. Maybe their country was colonized and taken over. Um, or maybe individuals in their families can experience shame. It's such a heavy, heavy, horrible emotion. The worst of emotions to have. So if you've got shame in your life, um, really pay attention to this video. Share this video with someone who experiences a lot of shame and um, this could be the first step for them to move forward and heal themselves so the next step on this sort of emotional scale is blame you know where we play the victim in life um, I've done it I'm sure you've done it we all do it just part of life really <laughs> um, hatred another very powerful I would say negative emotion I'm not really gonna say negative emotion I say heavy heavy slow vibration emotion it really hurts us hatred it's, it's not a you know and I know um, it's not a good emotion. Grief, you know, when we lose someone we love, um, you, sometimes the grief process can take years, days, weeks, months, years, decades. You can be held and bound in grief, uh, and that can really keep you prisoner in that heavy, heavy emotion. As soon as you remember that person, it triggers all those emotions, those feelings in your body, and you just feel like you're weighed down again. It's a horrible feeling. And yes, it's all right. It's it's very important to remember, you know, to remember your loved one, honor them. This, this, when you have sort of a synesthesia of grief, it can really hold you down, really mess with your life in a horrible, horrible way. And it can also be grief of what you've done in the past, mistakes you've done in the past, regrets you've had. It happens to everyone. Desire. Now, this is sort of when you're moving up these emotional scale. The desire is when you, you want to, you know, you really want to, you turn your life around, you think, yeah, I'm going to do something, I'm going to achieve something, I'm going to go for something. And that's a higher vibration emotion. Um, that's a really cool emotion to have is desire, because desire, um, it, it sort of gets you moving. So when you're stuck in shame, blame, hatred, and grief, it's everyone else's fault. You're sort of bound by the past. You're trapped. You're a prisoner by your emotions. You can't seem to move forward. You're depressed. You're anxious. And this can happen to a lot of people, even from childhood. These four can operate very strongly in holding a person back. But once you once you click into desire, that, that sort of gets the wheels spinning a bit more. You say, yeah, I want to do this. I want to change jobs. I want to improve my relationship. I want to improve my life. And that sort of gets things rolling, it gets things moving, it gives you the impetus to, impetus to take action. But what I'm going to show you is that, yes, desire is awesome, but the, the, the greater power lies in bringing peace, joy, and love to the, to the goals you're, you're setting yourself and that you want to achieve. So love, joy, and peace, extremely light emotions, extremely powerful emotions to engage in your everyday life. And I'm going to talk about how we can engage them in different areas in, in a few minutes, a few moments. But peace, joy, and love, you know, instead of, um, you know, with the whole desire thing, it's like me, 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 I've got to compete, I've got to win, I've got to be the best. There's a struggle to win. Um, instead of that, it becomes, you know, a really groovy way to go and win is just by being full of love, full of joy, full of peace. It becomes effortless, it becomes e easy, it becomes grace, grace-filled. Grace is another really powerful word to do with these three, grace. I'm sure you've heard that before. You know, achieving with grace, 
winning with grace and having class when you win you know have you ever you ever you know very few people um you know maybe actors you would say james stewart has a lot of grace grace kelly has a lot of grace that's her name the people who do things in a very classy fashion they do it with ease and effortlessness and those people are very few and far between but it's a really something we can all aspire to i'm not very classy myself i aspire to being classy and, and it's something maybe you know i'm working towards maybe you can too all right so desire instead of yeah you know crushing your opposition destroying your enemy um in going after and, and seeing everyone as your combatant combatant or the person in, in the way of getting your goals instead of approaching it in a, in a sort of classy grace filled peace love and joy manner where people are working with you people are helping you people are good people want to you know do things right things by you anxiety is another notch up on the i'm sorry anger is another notch up on the emotional scale so anger, anger is far more powerful than shame blame hatred and grief and desire so when you get angry you can get really angry and think yeah i'm going to change my life i'm going to do this i'm going to make this happen you've been there i've been there i'm sure you know everyone's been there at that place of anger where you've just said enough is enough and that is a very powerful way to get things moving though you know anger in short bursts can be very beneficial to you anger anger in short bursts is tremendously beneficial to your survival it's part of our survival makeup you know someone tries to mug you you're walking alone you're in the subway and someone tries to mug you the the anger is going to give you the power to fight off that mugger yeah or um yeah so things like that so but in the long term anger can really run you down ruin your relationships if you're an angry angry person um, being if you ever met someone you go well they're just an angry angry person and you know you'll notice that they really suffer in their relationships they have they struggle sometimes you know angers can be a good thing but it can be you know if you utilize it a lot over a long period of time it can wear your body down and it can um, make you sick and it can ruin your relationships so anger's got its place but not 24 7 pride is another one you know pride is another step on this up up on this emotional scale by being in pride you can um pride is is you know often they say you know get some pride have some pride you know when you're working with unemployed people or or um you know people who are homeless or people who are you know maybe they're part of a culture which has been traditionally beaten down over the years and has no self-respect and no self-love and they're just they have no self-esteem you can, by coming in and saying you know have some pride you know often with sporting teams in high school and um you know even uh, local community sporting teams or national sporting teams they say you know have some pride pride aussie pride american pride whatever it is pride and and it is a it is an emotion that which can really boost you up and, and we get you moving forward uh though not as strong as these three up here the classy graceful emotions of peace joy and love yeah so pride is cool a step up above anger now let's get into this how this is possibly relevant to your life so what you can do with this is i've got these three words here what would it take wwit what would it take what would it take what would it take what would it take now to bring love joy and peace into these different areas of your life now i want to i want you to identify really quick this is live so i'm really ringing it so i want you to look at your body first of all look at your body and understand understand where you are at with your body so your body might be um, uh, <clears throat> your. You might have some negative self opinions of your body. You might feel kind of depressed about your body and, and and angry about your body. So you might want to look at your body and go, where am I on this emotional scale with my body? Do I look at my body with peace, joy, and love, or do I look at my body with pride, anger, desire, grief, hatred, blame, or shame? Where am I on this? And you may say you hate your body. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of women and a lot of men out there. Who hate their body they don't they seriously don't like their body they're not happy with their body and um so the problem with that is it's not a very po po powerful positive emotion wouldn't it be better if you just you know loved your body had some peace about your body had some joy about your body now let's go look into your your thoughts your mind your thinking you know um oh sorry let's go back to body so if you've rated yourself on your body that you have a lot of shame around your body, you have a lot of anger around your body, you have a lot of grief about your body, maybe you've, you've put on a lot of weight, uh, maybe you let yourself go, maybe you're getting older and you just don't feel good about yourself. Then then the question to ask here is, you know, what would it take, what would it take to bring peace, joy and love to my body? 
What would it take to bring peace, joy, and love to my body? So what we're doing here is reversing the emotions. We're, we're going back and we're bringing the higher emotions, the lighter emotions, down here to neutralize these emotions. So it's like, um, it's like doing the opposite of what you're doing. So it's just one of the ways you can, you can do to, um, to, uh, bring yourself into more positive, empowering emotions. Yeah, cool. You, you, you getting it? You with me? <laughs> okay. So let's look at your mind. Maybe you've got some really horrible thoughts that pop up now and then. Maybe your thinking is not that good. Maybe yourself, the thoughts that go through your mind are quite negative and you identify your thoughts as being quite angry thoughts or shameful thoughts or, or self or victim thoughts or hatred thoughts. You, you're hating on people all, all day long. Or maybe you've got some sad thoughts. Yeah. Or maybe you've got these thoughts running around like I'm the best and you know, I'm the greatest, you know, and hey, that's, that's fine. Um, if, if it's working for you. Yeah. Now what you can do is you can go, what would it take to bring love, joy, and peace to my thoughts? And the thing is, you just keep asking that question. What would it take? What would it take? What would it take? What would it take for me to bring love, joy, and peace to my thoughts? And the thing is, you're actually creating a new focus. You're focusing on new things. Um, you're, you're breaking the habitual neurological patterns of your brain, which are to naturally gravitate. You know, when you think about your thoughts are naturally gravitating to this place here and I know like I've experienced in, in the past and sometimes when breaking out of this these these chains of these heavy emotions you take a lot of willpower and discipline and sometimes you get sucked back in depending on your company or just different things that you go through in your life uh, so it's really um, what would it take you just shift your focus this is a question where it is instead of saying you know I have always have peaceful joyful and loving thoughts that that's a powerful affirmation you can go you know what would it take for me to bring love joy and peace permanently to my thinking there you go very different now your emotions obviously um <clears throat> your emotions on a daily basis where are you on a daily basis with these you know some people will be, will be ticking off these emotions pretty much all day others who you know who worked on yourself a lot you've got a happier life things are going pretty good you'll very rarely venture down here maybe one or two of these will float up in your day yeah so what what would it take to experience peace joy and love on a continual daily basis every single day what would it take what would it take and asking that question shifts your focus very powerfully again it's what you focus on becomes your reality you know you heard that oft oft quoted saying what you focus on becomes your reality what you where thoughts go energy flows yeah so where you focus so if you focus on here these emotions they're heavy they're not good for your long term work in business yeah so ask yourself you know where am I in my work and business? And you'll be able to go, well, yeah, I have a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this. Um, and then you could ask yourself, you know, what would it take for me to bring peace, joy, and love to my business instead of these? What would it take? And that, again, that is shifting your focus, yeah. This is not rocket science to people who study this stuff a lot in self-development. But for a person who, if you're a person who's just really at your wit's end and you don't know why, why, why your life's not working, then it's really about installing these emotions in your life. Um, installing these emotions and, and, and minimizing the heavier, heavy emotions. Yeah. Let there be light. Obviously, you've heard that saying, let there be light. Let there be light emotions rather than let there be heavy emotions.